Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we of course have three missions to take care of, the EVE, the Kerbal Duna Landing and the Jewel Probe. So we will make sure to take care of those, but first I want to talk about another mod and that is Kerbal Engineer Redux. Now to begin we have to unlock the parts associated with Kerbal Engineer, so we'll go to the tech tree. And here at the start, we see here now a computer flight unit. And that entry purchase is zero. That is one that we want. And this is the Kerbal Engineering System. So we'll unlock that as well. And we will talk about what those are for. I don't believe there should be any other parts around here. So that means that the probes that we currently have sent out will not have Kerbal Engineer on them. Because in order to have Kerbal Engineer on, you need these parts on your ship. The version of Kerbal Engineer Redux I'm using here is version 1.0.15.2 and that is a test build right now. Uh, it is the only version that is compatible with uh, KSP version 0 0.90 so uh, this will be the version you should be using. I've been uh, messing around with this. Hold on, let's get back to Kerbin and uh, talk about the functions in detail one at a time. In the VAB, you'll get this display whether you have the little parts on it or not. Where are the parts? Ah, here we go. Uh, Kerbal Engineering System and uh, the Computer Flight Unit. And these will give you other data in flight. But in the VAB, you'll get this display regardless of having those on. I'm not going to actually build an in-flight uh, launch right now. We're just going to see the in-VAB functions and then we'll take care of the in-flight functions uh, later on. So let's say we have a little pod here and you can see I have all stages here. If uh, you don't have all stages you'll only get stages that have fuel on. Let's add such a stage. So now we get a uh, stage here and you'll only get uh, fueled stages uh, when you have all stages not selected. And you can have these atmospheric settings but that will affect the delta V because as we know the engine ISP is different in sea level and in vacuum so here's the sea level delta V this is the vacuum delta V okay you got burn time you got your delta V calculated out for you so uh, now you might think you'll never use the rocket equation again but remember in the previous episode we showed that you can work backwards using the rocket equation to calculate your maximum payload on a single stage to orbit system and there are other functions. Uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux cannot predict if you've got both jets and rockets on your craft it can't predict when you're going to switch from one to the other. If you've got mixed engines, for instance engines with one ISP and another ISP and you're going to shed just the engines at some point uh, similar to an Atlas rocket um, it can't predict when you're going to just shed half the engines without shedding uh, if you if you got more complicated staging let's just say it can't predict that for you I usually use MechJeb and that is not because of any of the reasons I just cited MechJeb will have the same problem with the jets rockets switching and all that but MechJeb does a better job of dealing with the thrust weight ratio in Real Solar System and Realism Overhaul, which is a set of mods that converts Kerbin to Earth and converts the Kerbin Solar System to Sol System, our Earth Solar System. So in that situation, with those mods, the thrust varies with altitude. And so you'll see here, as we change the pressure, we see that delta V changes, but we're not seeing the thrust to weight ratio change. And so as we get higher in altitude, thrust-to-weight ratio remains the same according to Kerbal Engineer Redux. In MechJeb, it shows you that actually the sea level thrust, when you're using those mods, which we don't have here, so this is all right for in here or with the stock engines as they are right now. But when you're using those highly modified engines for real solar system and realism overhaul, then the thrust varies and this would not, probably would not get off the ground. Um, let's see, it actually, it actually might. Um, of course, the modified version of this in Realism Overhaul probably wouldn't. Uh, 
the issue is that the thrust actually varies the same as the ISP. So you see how the ISP varies? Well, the thrust will vary about the same, which means your thrust to weight ratio will be different. All right, so that's why I generally use uh, MechJib. Oh, let's uh, see with all stages on. Oh, well, like, let's add another stage. Let's uh, separate here. Okay, now we can see that the actual capsule is uh, costing 1,022, has a mass of 940 kilograms, so that's a payload now, and uh, it has no delta V, of course, and you can see that in a much more pure sense. Uh, now you can compare engines. For instance, we've got uh, this engine, which has a high va vacuum ISP, and we've got this engine with a lower vacuum ISP. Let's go to vacuum. Let's assume that we're going to use them in their native habitat. And the question is, which engine is better? Which one will give us the better delta V? Well, instead of doing the calculations, you can just, just slap them on. 1,046, uh, 846. This one is better right now. But what if we slap more fuel on? Let's say 4 tons of fuel. Now that's 4,220. And this is, well, this one's still more. Let's say five tons of fuel. 4,646. Okay, 4,691. We're getting closer. 4,988. 4,982. So here's the crossover point for you. So when your total not uh, total mass, not including the engines themselves, is seven thousand seven hundred and forty uh, kilograms, seven point seven tons, let's say, then that is the switchover point between the LV909 and our little Rocket Max 487S. And so you can see that. However, there are other considerations. For instance, the thrust weight ratio of this is pretty low, and its burn time is ridiculously long. So if you are actually making a long transfer, this might not end up doing that transfer accurately because you want to do it uh, close to the maneuver node. Eventually your orbit is going to be curving away from the maneuver node and you might not be able to do the maneuver properly. And of course, uh, don't try to use this as a launch stage. This it will give you a shorter amount of time and of course, uh, if you put something much more high powered, of course, shorter time, but this one has much less delta V because lower ISP and heavier. Okay, so you can t do all that sort of testing out now in the VAB using Kerbal Engineer Redux. Also, uh, while this had a low thrust weight ratio in respect to Kerbin, if we were on, say, Minmus, this would be quite all right. Well, overpowered, in fact, though we don't have a lower powered engine. You could uh, right click on here and thrust limit and it reads the thrust limiting properly. So let's go to 20% thrust and now we see the thrust weight ratio 1.56 is quite appropriate. And there are novelty ones like Gilly which are really really tiny. Gilly is the smallest body in the system uh, barring asteroids. And uh, Eve, no not so much. Eve in fact uh, maybe you should outfit one of these because uh, this will be a thrust weight ratio of 1.3 now. Okay, so that is the in-VAB functionality of uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux. They added these. Th these weren't here until very recently, I think. Uh, so you've got the Delta V, uh, a little bit redundant. Uh, very redundant, actually. Uh, these are all redundant with this display. Though I guess uh, that's if you want to shrink this display and you can still see them there. Um, so yeah, you've got the little icon here to shrink that. Electric charge is helpful. That's, uh, but, well, just as a reminder, though, um, maybe we'll talk about fuse box later on because fuse box will tell you how long this is going to last with its electric charge, and that's sort of the more important idea. Uh, if we slap on something that takes electric charge, let's say an antenna. Yeah, this, this doesn't say anything about that. Okay. So, uh, mount propellant, uh, liquid fuel oxidizer, pretty standard stuff. All right, so this is the f our first foray into Kerbal Engineer Redux. All right, 
So uh, with that, I'm going to move on to our mission. Now, our missions do not have these little parts, so we're not going to be able to see the in-flight stuff just yet. We'll have to wait until... Let's take a look at contracts quickly to see if there's something we can do that we can slap those on and test that functionality out with. Perform visual surveys of Kerbin. Position satellite and polar orbit of Kerbin. You know, our funds is, are really uh, a bit strained. I mean, we've got all these missions on the way. We really need to bring some of them back before trying something new. All right, let's just, uh, well, yeah, then these are the ones that we're, we've got on the way right now. Let's try and focus on getting things done properly instead of uh, launching something new. Okay, well, alarm clock tells me that my Eve lander is the first one. So I'm going to, I could time warp here and it'll stop me, but let me just go to the vessel. Okay, so here we are. And the one thing about uh, going to the vessel is you're going to want to pay attention to your electric charge. Uh, you can see we can't select Kerbal Engineer here right now. Okay, I'll have the Kerbal Alarm Clock display up just, just for the heck of it. Okay, here we go. Kerbal Alarm Clock slowing me down. Okay, delete on close, and we will skim across the boundary, and then we'll make further corrections to our EVE trajectory. Alright, we are coming in in a very inclined sort of way. It doesn't really matter, we're not transferring over to Gilly or anything, we're trying to land. But we do want to get into orbit first. That's a little bit, well, I guess we're, we're, we're going to use uh, air braking calculator to figure that out. But let me bring my periapsis down to make the calculation a little bit more accurate. And I also want to, just for the heck of it, fix this tilt. And so it's just a combination of the pink ones and blue ones. Well, let me keep it to 129 and uh, look at air braking calculator to verify. Uh, so let's do this burn though. I think it started going up again. Well, I don't like that, but uh, that's because we started the burn early. Okay, well, 261 then. Let us see what. Well, okay, let's see what air braking calculator has to say. Wow, it says 59.7 kilometers, which is a little bit closer to Eve than I'd like to get, actually. I think I won't mind slowing myself down a little bit, so I'll keep it a little bit higher than that. So, of course, uh, here we have to have the cursor over here and take a look at what our periapsis is. With Kerbal Engineer, once we get started with all that stuff, uh, we'll have a little display on the side so we don't even have to be in the map view to see the number. But for now, cursor on there. Alright, uh, 64.8 sounds quite low enough to me. Uh, so we'll probably be in a looser orbit than I was aiming for initially, but uh, we'll do that with uh, using our own fuel instead of relying on EVE. For those who haven't been around EVE before, its atmosphere is extremely thick. It's thicker than Kerbin's. Its gravity is greater than Kerbin's. And so it is the most challenging thing to actually get off of. Wait a minute. If this is going to be our lander... Oh, right. Parachutes are here. Okay, good. I was going like, where's the parachute? Oh, parachutes are on the side. All right. Um, yeah, it's the most challenging thing to get off of, but landing is pretty easy because the thick atmosphere allows your parachutes to really work uh, quite excessively, actually. You should wait, wait a while before deploying the parachutes around EVE because otherwise uh, they're going to take a long time to get you to the surface. Now, it wanted uh, data from space. So I guess we can take care of that now. Uh, well, I really don't need that up. So let's see now. Thermometer probably wouldn't work from out here. Let's try a goo. Okay, let's transmit that data. Okay, now let's get into orbit around Eve. And this pass should do it.
Eve's atmosphere, I believe, begins like at 95 kilometers. Let's see. Forget exactly where. And 90 something. I know it's. I don't think it's exactly 100. So again, uh, for those who don't know, uh, air braking calculator is a website, and so you can just type KSP aero braking into your search engine of choice, and uh, you should be able to. It should be like the top result. Uh, on the other hand, maybe air braking calculator might not work correctly uh, with the with the changes they have planned for version 1.0 since they're changing the aerodynamics. But it shouldn't be too far off anyway. I mean, I, I hope. We'll see. Okay, so we are in orbit. Uh, we got that part. Of, yes, or maybe it's because the periapsis is too low. Uh, we'll we'll go to a. Let, let's reduce our apoapsis a little bit. We don't have to have it this high. Okay, that'll do for now. Let's go up to apoapsis and get into a proper orbit so that we can fill that contract okay we've achieved orbit around Eve that is good and now that we've done that I'm gonna drop this orbit right back down well maybe we should try and come down on this side rather than on that side let me raise the orbit on that side because that side's the nighttime side I don't want to come down on that side so we've raised our orbit there and I'm gonna go around and then dip the orbit on this side so that we come down on this side. How about we try and hit this part here? Um, maybe with a little bit of inclination too? Tough to change inclination around Eve, it's worse than Kerbin for that. But we've got fuel. Try and get an uh, optimal chance at hitting land here. Okay, I think 40 should do it. Definitely 40 should do it. Question is whether it's gonna do it by this point or whether I'm gonna be over water. And so that'll be an interesting test. We're we're gonna find out. We have a little bit of fuel to slow down with still. Let's see. Well we're on in the dark, so I can't really see my orientation for the solar panels. Once they add re-entry heat, uh Hitting Eve will be tough. Now yeah, you know what, I think I might want to be lower. Okay, now I think we're going to hit land, or at least we have a better chance of it. Now, a thermometer reading here, can we do that? Yes. Uh, let's transmit that. Okay, good, good. I'll save the remaining goo and the uh, science junior for the surface. You know, I might not be giving uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, enough credit. Maybe, maybe if the thrust did vary on the engines with respect to altitude, that uh, I'd have I I need to check it out in Realism Overhaul again. I haven't checked it in Realism Overhaul in a while. Maybe it's fixed for Realism Overhaul. I need to go back and check that out. Okay, here we go. Looking good. Looking like we're going to hit land alright. Of course, if this was... Oh darn, uh, we've got a little... No, we're, we're missing that pond, but we're awful close. If this was anything like Venus, uh, the main problem with uh, trying to make a lander for Venus is that the uh, atmospheric pressure will crush you like a tin can. Yeah, gotta build your probes particularly strong to withstand that. Okay, again, uh, don't want to rush the whole deployment of parachute thing. All right, more science accumulated. I think I might as well just use thrust to slow myself down. Got so much fuel on board. Ah, no, it's not enough. We don't have a thrust weight ratio for this. All right, parachutes. 
remember, Eve's gravity, very strong stuff. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to 3.9 meters per second. And thus we have landed a probe on Eve. Yes, everybody agree with that? Yes, they do. Okay, so, observe materials bay. And we will transmit that data first. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to recover it from here. Okay, that's done. Mystery goo. Transmit. And finally, the thermometer. Alright, so Explore Eve is complete. We now have sufficient funds. Uh, let's go back to the VAB and actually try and uh, launch a mission that we can take a look at Kerbal Engineer Redux with. We've got a pretty simple science data from space around the moon contract here. I think uh, we can do that quickly to show off the functionality of Kerbal Engineer. So all we need is a quick little probe. Probably the Octo is the best solution for this. And I'll put it together right away. Okay, nothing particularly novel about what we're doing here. Uh, I have created the cheapest craft that I thought would definitely take care of this, except we are adding Kerbal Engineer System, which uh, that is an additional 350. I'm not adding this computer flight unit, so we're just going to see the functionality of this unit right here. And um, yep, yeah, that should be good enough for now. And so all we're doing is transmitting and recovering scientific data from space around the moon. Possibility of recovery with the parachute we'll see depending on our delta V. And um, you can see the situation here. Most of the launch will take place with first stage. However, the second stage will have to complete orbit. And that's why it, uh, it continues to have a reasonably high thrust to weight ratio. And then it transfers over to the moon, gets into orbit around the moon. That, I mean, we don't really need to ha get into orbit around the moon. Actually, it'd be easier to bring it back if we didn't. And uh, maybe I'll consider that. But let's just uh, go ahead and launch this. Not even going to name it. Right now, we're just going to uh, try out the systems. Oh, this is new. I don't remember seeing this little... Okay, so it's got the display like this. Used to be a lot bigger, this display, and so that was another reason why I didn't like it. But now, now it's uh, sort of trim and a smaller font, so that's nice. Let me time warp to daylight. Okay, that's better. So, you can see here... See, HUD 1 is there, HUD 2 is there, so these two, if you don't want this up, obviously you can just, um, we can uh, hide the control bar, probably just hide the control bar, huh? Uh, anyway, uh, the important thing is apoapsis height and periapsis height, obviously, that'll tell you when you're going to get to orbit. I tend to not need time to periapsis too much, time to apoapsis is essential. Uh, altitude above the terrain, which is your radar altitude as opposed to this. Note that it's reading 11.1 .1, even though we're barely off of the launch pad, and that's because it measures from the center of the vessel, not from the bottom. Uh, vertical speed, horizontal speed, and biome. Now maybe you don't want all of that, and uh, so you can edit them. And so here you see the HUD-1 uh, edits and you can add these. Here are the installed ones. So let's say I wanted to remove time to periapsis, fine. And maybe I wanted inclination for some reason. But especially if you're rendezvousing with a target. Uh, there's rendezvous here. So if you want your separate rendezvous. Ooh, that looks a little bit more. Let's not do that right now. Um, yeah, I, obviously this is to find your target and all that, but we don't have a target available right now. So that's fine. Oh, I guess we could say uh, rendezvous celestial bodies moon, right? Okay, so now we have the moon and its data, and so you can try and match that, but we really don't need that. Okay, so various categories of information. Otherwise, I mean, not really... Anything interesting? If you had some really weird contracts. Oh, uh, Delta V, yeah. Okay, so um, where would we put Delta V? Probably, uh, maybe HUD would be a good thing to put Delta V, uh, Delta v on. So let's say Vessel, uh, Delta V, 
current and total, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this will be your current stage, and that's your total delta V. Another thing uh, normally I'd like is time to the end of the burn, the remaining burn time. That's at least something in uh, in MechJeb, but I don't see it here. Might be somewhere. Uh, this seems to have a much more robust suicide burn countdown, and that's uh, to uh, determine how long you have until you hit hit the surface when you're landing. So you can time your time your burn to the last possible moment, which, as I've noted, is the most efficient thing to do. Surface impact time, I got impact time. Uh, suicide burn time is uh, at the clock so that you know when to start the burn. Hold on, let's get rid of the editor and then get rid of that. Okay, all we need is a little HUD up there. I think that'll be fine. Okay, throttle up, SAS on. Let's get our resources though. Let's move, uh, okay, how do we move the stuff? Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, let's not edit that one. Let's edit this one. Okay. Float. Let's float you to over here. How about? Nope. You snap to that location. Um. Okay. Maybe we'll just have you float, like so, and just for symmetry. We'll have uh, we'll have that float as well. That'll do. We'll put curve along. Well, we don't even need curve alarm clock right now. Okay, I'll call that good enough. All right, so all systems go and launch. This has a lot more giddy up and go than I thought it would with the thrust to weight ratio that Kerbal Engineer was indicating. The interesting thing about this is, uh, watching the numbers, you can learn a lot more about your profile, and we're going very fast right now, so I do want to turn a little bit earlier. And so you can see the trade off between vertical speed and horizontal speed, and uh, when what your limit to of time to apoapsis ought to be. Eventually you realize that you really don't want time to apoapsis going too high and of course too low would be very bad. We'll go for one, well we'll go till this thing runs out. There we go. So we'll just circularize at 96. Oh I guess we, uh, we will have to recover this. I forgot the antenna. Huh. Okay so uh, yeah. Gonna have to recover this. Really, we probably didn't need a thrust weight ratio of one on this stage, but anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, 100 by 96 is fine. And now we have 2,000 LTV left. Lots and lots. In fact, I actually plan to get into orbit around the moon and do everything and then leave, but really, uh, getting into orbit around the moon is excessive. Could probably just do a free return of some sort. Yeah, that, that'll be a free return alright. So we'll just do a loop-de-loop -loop around the moon and get our science and come right back. I think there is a function... let me see... here we go, uh, under... time to no burn, here we go. Anyway, this is supposed to tell you when when you should burn. No burn time, 29.7. Well, that's definitely different from this. No burn time at one half thrust. No, no, one half thrust. No, half. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, so, uh, because you want to do uh, half of it on one side of the maneuver node and half on the other, it's giving you the burn time on the first half. Uh, the second half will go faster, right? Uh, it's telling you half of the delta V on one side, half of the delta V on the other, but the uh, delta V on the other side of the maneuver node will actually go faster, if that makes sense. Um, so that's the 15.8 seconds and it's subtracting that from the time to the node. So time to node it's getting from there, the same, same number, but it's just subtracting this 
from that to get the time to no burn. Let's try it out. Let's try out the time to no burn and see if it works out. No delta V prograde, obviously, completely. And it tells you how much delta V you've done normal, and, which is the pink ones, and how much you're doing radio, which is the blue ones. So we're all prograde right now. Lots of information there. Okay, so time to no burn 30 seconds, 20, 10, 5, go. Try to aim right. There seems to be okay. Uh, down. Well, let's see where we ended up. I couldn't do it precisely, obviously. Ah, the node stuff all goes away once you get rid of the node. It's a good sign. Uh, that's not a good sign right there. Let's see. How do I fix that? Probably on this side. I should just watch it. I mean, it's not good letting trusting stuff too much. Okay, how's that periapsis on the moon side? That's not bad. Okay, well that'll definitely bring us back down. Okay, so we're on a free return. And we can get rid of that orbital view. Okay, here we are. The moon sphere influence, and so to fulfill the contract, we should be able to do this here. Let's let's wait until we're close to the moon, though. I don't think we've done any science junior around the moon. Observe materials bay. Well, we're still high over the moon. Oh well. Anyway, keep the data, and we just swing around. Nothing much for us to do, really. So another good thing about having these views, you, you could pretty much do it continuously from this view except for creating the maneuvers. Makes it a little bit more visually friendly. Uh, periapsis height is a little bit higher than I thought it would be. So, and that's because I time warped through the SOI. Just gonna correct that by retro burning. That should do the trick. We can probably also add vessel mass to this, which would be helpful right now to determine whether I need to burn some fuel in order to make it safe for the parachute. I'm not gonna add that right now. Let me just check the map view. Ah, we've got one ton. That should be okay for the parachute. Okay, 6.3 meters per second. Should be safe, but uh, as we get closer, I'll run the engine. Probably gonna have to let this flop. I don't know if it'll float. I'll try keeping SAS on. It'll flop, but it's a slight. It's a safe flop, not a not a detrimental flop. Let's recover. So there you have it, a uh, quick little mission with our second mod, uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux. And uh, probably next episode I'll just quickly handle uh, Fuse Box, which I mentioned in this episode. Wow, we landed that a ways away from the KSC. Anyway, but we got uh, some funds back and we certainly fulfilled the contract, so no problems there. But yeah, next episode, uh, just quickly Fuse Box and so that we can uh, take care of the Duna Landing and Jewel Probe. And uh, perhaps before we actually get to the Jewel Probe, we'll have to send that mission to take, a, uh, launch the mission to do the ghillie landing and all of that. So, um, yeah, maybe do the landing and launch of the ghillie probe would be the order of operations. All right. So, uh, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.